I'm really sorry for this, like, extended hiatus. I was driving back from Bellingham, and then I've been trying to find a job, and so I just didn't get a chance to read, to post books. I did read books. I have a slew of books for you. I think there's, like, six. The first book is, uh, Victoria by Anna Kirwan, I think, and it's one of the Royal Diaries, uh, series of books, so they all have, like, this gold, uh, binding on them, and they're all about royal, young royals. And this one is about uh, Victoria I, who was queen for something like 50 years, I think, and uh, she became queen when she was 18. She's a really interesting person. Uh, this, I, I kind of liked, I kind of liked the book. Um, it wasn't riveting. It it was interesting to read, but I also, it was also about when she was very much younger. Uh, she was only probably 10 when the diary started and 12 or 13 when it ended, so there wasn't a whole lot of intrigue and fun. And there was, there, of course there was court intrigue because, you know, she's part, she's a young woman in the court and there's people who want to take that power from her. But it wasn't like Marie Antoinette's uh, diary, where you actually get her uh, with her new husband and learning a little bit more about what it means to be royalty and how she's going to deal with her duties. Uh, Victoria, it was more about her home life and how she had a very domineering... Well, he was, he was supposed to be a servant of her mother's. He was supposed to be something like her treasurer or something. And he was just very domineering and took advantage, and her mother didn't stop it because her mother wasn't strong enough to really stand up to him. And so it's more about that dynamic and what she grew up with to the point where she became 18 and was queen and threw all of that off and said, you know what? I'm the queen. You're going to do as I say. So that's uh, Victoria, the May Blossom of Britannia by Anna Kirwan, part of the Royal Diaries series. The next book is one I don't actually have with me. I borrowed it from a friend. It is Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. 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 I don't know how to say his last name. I feel terrible. This book is about the coming apocalypse, but it's the most hilarious apocalypse books, book that you've ever read. The, the, uh, demons who are supposed to place the Antichrist have misplaced him. He got sent home with the wrong family, so he just went home with a very nice, very normal British family instead of, you know, like a American diplomat who would teach him all about, uh, politics. And so all of the people who have been trying to mold the Antichrist into what they want, yeah, they've been molding just a regular child. And so the the kid has been gro the Antichrist has been growing up, kind of just free of any real influence from anyone except for his friends and his parents. And it's really interesting. There's a quote in there. He didn't grow up good or evil. He grew up human. I love that quote. I love this book so much. The representatives from heaven and hell, uh, Crowley and Aziraphale have been on Earth for a very long time. And they've decided that they, well, first of all, they're bros. They're, like, friends now. They they don't dislike each other. They know that they can't change each other and things are gonna happen, but they're just like, you know what? We're cool, man. You and me, we're cool. And they've decided that they don't want the apocalypse to happen because they rather like Earth. They don't want either heaven or hell to reign. It is a wonderful, wonderful book. It is hilarious, and one of the best parts are the little footnotes at the bottom of the pages, because the footnotes don't really add anything to the plot. Sometimes they explain a little bit about, like, a reference, but they're just hilarious to read. Like, there's a footnote on the phrase, The road to hell is paved with good intentions. Footnote. 
No, it's not. It's paved. The road to hell is paved with frozen door to door salesmen. And the demons go sledding on them in the winter. It's hilarious. You should definitely read it. I am going to find a copy and buy it and keep it in my personal library because the one that I read was actually my friend Natalie's and I couldn't keep it because she loves the book as well. <laughs> so, Good Omens, Terry Pratchett, Neil Gaiman, go and read it. Go and read it in the bookstore, go and get it from the library, go and buy it because you will love it. It is a wonderful wonderful book. The next book is Save the Date by Tamara Summers. I mentioned Tamara Summers on the last book post she wrote, uh, Never Bite a Boy on the First Date. This is the book of hers that I read that I have read, I don't know, something like 12 times since I bought it, and I think I only bought it two or three years ago. It is a, it is a fan fantastic little teen romance. It's not going to be a great a, a great paragon of literature, but it is a wonderful teen romance book. And the way that she writes, there's wonderful banter, there you really cheer for the couple to get together, which is a good thing. You should always cheer for the couple to get together in a romance, otherwise the author is doing something wrong. And it it's just a marvelous little book. I love, every time I reread it, I, I know the plot basically by heart, but every time I reread it, I'm like, haha, this is hilarious. So, it's, it's about this girl who has five sisters, I believe? Yes, five. Two of them have already been married, one of them is getting married, and one of them comes home and is like, I'm getting married too! Haha! Her sister, who is I'm getting married to, is a crazy person, and this is exactly something like what she would do. And so, Jack, the girl, is caught up in all of this wedding madness, and she believes that she is cursed. She has a wedding curse that any time she brings a date to the wedding, bad things will happen. So, she has sworn off dating, which is not good, because the wedding planner's son is someone that she really, really likes. And he really, really likes her and does not believe in the wedding curse and he keeps trying to convince her the wedding curse does not exist. So, it's, it's a fun book. You should definitely read this when you get a chance. I love it. Every single time I read it. Save the date, tomorrow summers. The next book is one that I got from the library and I've heard wonderful things about it, and it did not disappoint. It is Beauty Queens by Libba Bray. And this book is about this plane full of beauty queens on the way to the beauty pageant that crash on a desert island. And they have to figure out how to survive. And not just do they have to figure out how to survive, there's also this entire other piece to it about, like, the corporation, which is pretty much, I think, what America has turned into at this point, is, is the corporation. And they sponsor everything. And the corporation is doing dirty deeds, and they're on the same island as the beauty queens, and these women have to figure out, A, how to survive when a lot of them start out kind of airheaded, a little bit, and they also have to figure out how to rely on each other because that's all that they have left. And it's, it's a book that is really about female empowerment, but not in a way that you're like, oh god, another book about female empowerment. Because sometimes you're like, okay, we get it, women are awesome, and they need to know that they're awesome. That's marvelous. But sometimes it's really hard as a woman to remember that when you're like, well, I want to be pretty too. And this book takes all of that into account and gives you a feeling of empowerment as a, as a woman. And at the same time, some of it is absolutely ridiculous. There's reality TV show Pirates. There are, there's this ridiculous dictator who is insane. There's a, there's so much 
happening? That's ridiculous that you're like, this is marvelous, but what, what is going on? And with any other, I don't know how she did it, but the ridiculous didn't seem over the top. It goes right up to the line, but it stays on the side of just entertaining. And I love this book. I definitely plan to buy my own copy because I borrowed my I borrowed this copy from the library. But I definitely plan to buy it and read it again. And it made me want to actually either find or create some sort of female empowerment convention where you just go and you're like, "Yes, we are awesome. Girl power." And so that's Beauty Queens by Libba Bray. And the last book I have is one that I was really excited to read because I read Hex Hall. Uh, you may remember I reviewed Hex Hall, I think, last time. And this is the second one, The Demon Glass. And it is so good. I have a love-hate relationship with this book because I loved it. It was marvelous. I love all of the the people that she's meeting, I love all of the stuff that she's getting into, the banter, her sarcasm, her wit. It was a marvelous book. I, I had to just keep reading, I think I read it in like three days. But I always hate the second book of a trilogy because you get questions raised and you're like, yes, questions! And then they don't get answered until the third book because you can't have a resolution until the third book. So, it leaves on a cliffhanger. The second book of all trilogies leave on a cliffhanger! And so, I, I want the next one of these books so badly. Because it ends on a cliffhanger. And I want to know what happens next. And the next one, Spellbound, doesn't come out until March, which is really sad for me. So, anyway, Demon Glass is about uh, Sophie. Sophie is back and she is spending the summer in London. And I don't want to spoil the first book for anyone who hasn't read it yet, but there are romantic entanglements and there's plots. Plots are afoot! The plot is afoot! It's a wonderful series. I can't wait for Spellbound to come out because I know that it'll just wrap up the entire thing so amazingly. So I can't really give a lot of information about Demon Glass because I don't want to spoil it for people who haven't read Hex Hall. Go read Hex Hall and then you will want to read Demon Glass. You will want to buy the hardcover Demon Glass like I did. Uh, it's So Demon Glass, Rachel Hawkins. It's a fantastic book. I highly recommend it. Those are all of the books that I've read. Uh, between the last time that I posted a video and now. I plan to read some more and I will actually ha hopefully have a real book post on the correct day. On ho Hopefully on Friday or Saturday. I don't know which because I'm going to be going and doing things and I have a tendency to post late. So I hope that you enjoyed all of these books. I hope that you'll go and check some out. A lot of them are really fantastic books. So I will be back on Friday or Saturday and happy reading!